Hey everyone, welcome back to Code in Motion. Today we're looking at leak code problem number 15, threesome. Given an integer array nums, return back all the triplets such that number one plus number two plus number three is equal to zero. Now notice that we can't use the same index twice. So I cannot equal J, J cannot equal K, and I cannot equal K. However, we could use the same number if there's duplicate numbers in the array. Let's take a look at how this looks using example number one. Over here, we have the nums input array. And which three numbers add up to zero? Well, negative one plus zero plus one sums up to zero. And so negative one, zero, one is a solution. However, zero plus one minus one is also a valid solution. So why isn't it in my result? Well, it's because we don't want to add duplicate results. Negative one, zero, one, and any variation of this should only count as one result. We could also use the same number twice as long as it's different indices. So let's take a look at this result over here. Negative one plus negative one plus two is equal to zero. In this case, we can use negative one twice because it appears twice inside of the array. So with any leak code problem, you always want to start out with the typical brute force solution just to get something on paper and get a working algorithm. After you look at the brute force solution and analyze the time and space complexity, that's when you want to start thinking about a more optimal solution and seeing where you can improve the algorithm from the time complexity or the space complexity. In this case, the brute force solution is using a triple for loop. So three for loops, which is going to be O of n cubed time complexity and iterate the i, j and k pointers to look at every single triple pair in the array and then sum them up and see if they're equal to zero. Now, the question we should ask ourselves is, can we beat O of n cubed? And so you should start thinking about n log n or n squared, which is better than n cubed. So the brute force solution showed us that the time complexity is O of n cubed. We're trying to think of an algorithm that's better than that. Maybe n log n or maybe n squared, but anything better than O of n cubed. And so since we're already trying to beat n cubed, we could effectively sort this array for free. And what do you mean for free? Sorting is n log n. But yes, n log n is much, much better than n cubed. So what if we sort the array and just analyzed what that looked like to see if we could be clever with how we iterate through the array. So for step one, let's just sort this array and see what that looks like. Okay, negative three, negative one, negative one, one, two, two. And now what we could do is actually just initialize the same IJK pointers that we had earlier. The only difference here is that we initialize K to the end of the list instead of one after J. Now, this is the big conceptual understanding of this problem. Why do we initialize K to the end of the array instead of one after J? Well, it's because since the list is now sorted, we can be very clever with how we traverse this array. If the sum of I plus J plus K is equal to zero, then that's amazing. That means we just found a result. However, if the sum is smaller than zero, then we increment the J pointer because the array is sorted. If you increment the J pointer, then your sum is going to get greater, right? So if the sum is negative, we want to increase the sum. So we move the J pointer. However, if the sum is greater than zero, that means the sum is too large. So we move the K pointer one to the left. We decrement K because that's going to lower the sum. And by having the array sorted like this, we could also avoid duplicates, which you'll see later, but we can also traverse the array in an optimal fashion by using this kind of two pointer technique with the J and K pointers. So let's actually see how this works. Let's start by summing up the three pointers and seeing what that equals to. So negative three plus negative one plus two is equal to negative two. Negative two is less than zero, right? So we need to increment J. We need to move j to increase the sum. Now, once again, we check negative three plus negative one plus two is equal to negative two. Once again, the sum is less than zero, so we need to move j along. We need to increase the sum. And we repeat the process. Negative three plus one plus two is zero in this case. 
We just found a solution. So let's add it to the result array and keep track of that. Now, since we found a result, we need to move both the J pointers and the K pointers, right? Because we already use the value of J and K. So we increment J and we decrement K at the same time. Now, remember the problem said that we must use distinct indices. So since K is equal to J, we're now done this iteration and we need to move the I pointer. So let's reset all the pointers and start the iteration again. Now we check the sum. Negative 1 plus negative 1 plus 2 is equal to 0. We just found another solution. The solution negative 1, negative 1, 2. Let's add it to the result. Now we move J and K along. However, we need to notice that K is the same exact number as it once was. And so in order to avoid duplicative elements, we need to keep track of the previous k value when we move k. Similarly, when we move j, we need to keep track of the previous value to avoid duplicates, and you'll see the same for the i pointer later on in the iteration. But since k is a duplicate element, we're just going to decrement k again. And now you see k is equal to j, so we're done the iteration, and we need to reset the pointers again. Now you'll notice i is at negative 1. However, i was negative 1 previously. And so now we found a duplicate for i. So simply move i and j along as well. Now we're going to continue the main core iteration. So 1 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. 5 is greater than 0, so we need to decrement k. Now k is equal to j, so we need to reset the pointers. However, once we reset the pointers, we're already out of the bounds of the array. So we're done the algorithm. The final result is negative 3, 1, 2, and negative 1, negative 1, 2. Now what's the time and space complexity of this? Well, let's think about it. We have one for loop for the I pointer, and then for every single iteration with the I pointer, we move J and K along using a two pointer technique in the array. And so at most, we scan every single value for J and K, which results in O of N for an O of N loop. And so the time complexity of this algorithm is O of N squared with O of N space. O of N squared is much better than O of N cubed, so we found the optimal solution. And like we said, we got sorting for free because sorting is n log n, but n squared is greater than n log n, so the time complexity is just the greater of the two. And the space is still O of n because we need to keep track of all the results that we find. All right, so now let's actually code out the solution. So the first step that we need to do is actually sort the input array, right? So that's the n log n operation. And now we have the input array in sorted fashion. So now we can actually use our two-pointer technique over here by iterating through i, j, and k pointers. So let's also initialize a result that's going to be an empty list. And then let's just get an n value, which is the length of nums. Now what I'm going to say is for i in range n, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we avoid duplicates with the i, j, and k pointers. So let's deal with i first. We have to be careful here because we need to look at the previous element for i. So I'm going to say if i is greater than 0, because if i is equal to 0, then there's no previous element, right? So we always take uh, the first index of the array. But if i is greater than 0, we need to make sure that nums i does not equal nums i minus 1. So if nums i does equal nums i minus 1, we just continue, right? We're just going to increment i until we no longer see a duplicate element. Now we need to create the two-pointer technique with the j and k pointers. So I'm going to initialize j and k. Now remember, j is always 1 after i, but k is always um, the last index in the array. And so k is actually equal to n minus 1. Now, while j is less than k, because remember, j cannot equal k, so it has to be strictly less than k, we could actually start uh, our business logic of incrementing j or decrementing k. So I'm going to keep track of the three uh, values using capital I, capital J, capital K. This is going to be equal to nums I, nums J, and nums K. Now I'm interested in the sum. So I'm going to say capital S for sum is equal to I plus J plus K. Now, if the sum is equal to zero, then I have a result, right? And so I'm going to say result.append I, J, K. Fair enough. Now what else do I need to do? I need to increment j, I need to decrement k because I just found a solution, but I also need to make sure that I avoid duplicate elements. 
And so we're going to need a while loop over here, similar to what we did for the i is greater than zero check. So I'm going to say while j is less than n to avoid uh, an out of bounds exception. And nums j is equal to nums j minus one. So if the current number at j is equal to the previous number, then we just increment j. We continuously do this until we find uh, a non duplicate element. Similarly, while k is greater than zero and nums k is equal to nums k plus one. In this case, remember, for k, since we start at the end of the array, the previous element is one greater than k. For j, it's j minus one. For k, it's k plus one. And we're going to say k minus equal one if we find a duplicate element. Now we're done this. We're done um, deduplicating the solutions. Now we have to go back to if the sum is not equal to zero. So L if the sum is greater than zero, what should we do? If the sum is greater than zero, then you decrement k to lower the sum. Else, that means the sum is less than zero. So we increment j to increase the sum. Finally, we're actually done the algorithm. I actually just noticed I forgot an and over here. So let's just quickly add that and run the algorithm to verify it succeeds. And there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more content like this, be sure to subscribe since I'm animating the entire Blind75 list. And I also make content about leak code patterns in general to make sure that you ace your coding interviews and you study efficiently. I'll see you in the next one.